enemy tries to do to hinder and stop our life. So God come along, give us the Holy Spirit and give us power. But the thing that kills us is we do not know fully how to use that power. Now, listen, we've been taught in church about the Holy Spirit, and about laying on the hands and about praying and speaking in tongues and prophesying. But that is not the fullness of the power that we have in the Holy Spirit. The thing that we have done is we have put that power in a little what we think in religious form in a way that we think we use it. But we have not tapped into the power of the Holy Spirit. And the reason we have it is, the, is one reason the evidence that we have not tapped into it is the devil is still ruling and reigning in the saints lives. Now, let me show you this. Let me show you this. Don't mean we don't have the Holy Spirit. Don't mean we don't have. We know how to. We know we, 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 we get we got we so religious. We done turn church and religion into a form and a fashion way of things. We done turned it into what we see on TV and what we see and hear what people do and the way we look and look at ourselves to other people. But we have not ourselves personally, individually, tapped into the full strength and the full measure of the Holy Spirit personally in our own life. Now listen, listen to what I want you to say. Listen, the Bible says this, and this is why I want you to get it in your, in your spirit, that if the things of Jesus was wrote, in this world, all the things he done, there would not be enough books in this world to contain them. Now, let me tell you why that is so true. Because Christ in every individual life is a book. And it's so many lives in everybody's life is a book about how Christ has impacted, especially believers, their life. And the thing that God is doing in your life is a book. And it's so many books. Everybody out here, life is a whole chapter. You got chapters and books and volumes of what Jesus want to do in your life. Now, listen to this. The thing that's killing us is we do not and have not tapped into the full source and the full measure of the Holy Spirit, which God has pulled out in us and have given to us. Let me tell you why. The devil know that the Bible said this. God said this to us. God has given these, the, us, the mystery of things. Mystery of things. Huh? That no man knows the spirit of God unless he has the spirit of God. And no man, and that spirit that God put in each one of us, the Bible says, searches all things, even the deep things, not only about us, but the deep things of God. You understand? To bring into reality the world, the earth realm, what God has and what God want to do through us. You with me? It's more. See, people think Christianity is just getting people saved. Christianity is just running around, you know, got a Bible in the hand and saying we know verses. That ain't the fullness of the Holy Spirit that God has and the power that God want to, you know, express through you. There is so much in this. There is so much in the Holy Ghost. There is so much in the spiritual realm of God that you and I have not tapped into yet. People live their whole life, their whole life with one experience. Huh? And the only experience they know is maybe they got saved or maybe they seen somebody on somebody do this or they spoke in tongues. But that is not the power and the fullness that God wants us to step into. As believers, as children of God, we are children not of some, some, some mystic God or something, the God of no power. We are children of the creator. No, you ain't, you ain't get what I'm saying. I'm not trying to hype you up. I want you to understand you are a child of the creator. Now, let me show you how significant that is. I did not know how significant that was until I started studying the life of Jesus. And when I studied the life of Jesus, let me show you something. He only was here for three years, three years. And in three years, he got folk, whether they was old, whether they was young, from everywhere in every walk of life. He has changed the whole world just in three years. That is powerful to be a son of God. Not to the age, to the age he was 30, he was nobody. He, they didn't know who he was because he was not expressing the power of the Holy Ghost. He was Jesus. He was God in man, Christ born, born through the virgin, born by the Holy Ghost, but not manifesting. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Many of you walking around like 33 years in Jesus' life, not expressing the power of the Holy Ghost because you haven't tapped into it yet. You just like Jesus. No, it don't mean you ain't a son. Jesus was a son from 1 to 30. But he wasn't expressing the power of the Holy Spirit out through his life. Now imagine, in three years, by him just expressing the power of the Holy Spirit, the Bible says there would not be enough books in the whole world. The whole
whole world to express written the things that he have done. And we sit here. All our lives are living. All this time. And not expressing the power that God has put in us. Why? Cares of the world. We let so much stop the power of God. We as thoughts, people, circumstance, situation, and we let that hinder, quench the spirit. People think you quench the spirit because you said something to make somebody mad. Baby, if your spirit is quenched that either, you need to be saved. Because that can't, look, look, listen, listen. It takes power. It takes something awesome to vex the Holy Ghost. You can't call the Holy Ghost a name and now he vex and quench and now he can't function. Ah, oh, I wish I need to talk to some folk who really want Jesus. God says, we are the children, we are his sons that he has given us power. What power? Power that he gave his son. Huh? The power that he put in Christ. Huh? The Bible said this same anointing, the same power that got Jesus up out the grave. It's the same power you and I should have. It ain't just living right. Folk live right and still going to hell. Oh, you don't believe me? That's some Buddhists. They some of the most humble, some of the most meekest, some of the most intellectual, some of the most knowledge, but they're on their way straight to it like a fire. See, anyway. So I figured so folk, won't, gee, the folk don't like that kind of myth. Well, let me tell you something. You got power in you that you haven't even tapped into yet. You got an anointing in you that you, it, it, ain't, it ain't no spiritual mess. It ain't by you just being spiritual and knowing how to speak in tongues and knowing how to quote a couple of verses. The devil can quote the Bible better than anybody up in here. Yes, he can. Come on. You hear what I'm saying? Go to church two with him one Sunday. He go to church every Sunday. He's sitting up in here right now. Yeah. See, here we go. Here we go. I'm trying to tell you something. Because your mind got you thinking and believing, you who you are, you what you are and why you are, and you don't know that God has made you his son. Years I've been bound by foolishness and filth. I've been wrestling with myself and going over in my mind and trying to say, God, what in the world is going on? Why in the world? What is going on? And God has to speak to you sometimes. You, have you ever just had to get away with God? Yes. Oh, yeah. Huh? Get alone with him. You know what I'm saying? No, I ain't talking about you grab somebody's tapes. I ain't talking about you grabbing somebody's videos. I ain't talking about you going trying to read a book and trying to get it. I'm talking about you got to get it straight from God himself. You need to hear from God. You need a word from God. And you got to say, God, now unless you tell me something, you need to speak in my spirit, speak in my heart, speak in something. But I need to hear something from you. I don't need to hear nothing from nobody else. I don't care how anointed they are. I don't care how saved they are. I don't care how much they done done. I don't care how big they are. I don't need to hear from no man. I need to hear from God. Come on. Personal intervening relationship. We sit here defeated by a defeated foe. You know what that make us? Fools. Listen, we sit defeated by somebody that's already defeated. It ain't like the devil gonna be defeated. It ain't like we hoping one day he, he get defeated. He's already defeated. And we sit here. Now, now let, me, let me help you. Let me help somebody out. Let me help somebody out. Because somebody's saying, well, preacher, you don't know what my problem, my dilemma is. See, you don't know what I'm going through. You don't understand what I'm dealing with. And you don't know how it is. And you ain't in reality of life. And you don't know what, I, what I've been facing and What's going on and what done happened and what done took place and who did and who didn't do it. What somebody did and what somebody didn't do it. Why they did and why they didn't and what they should have done and, and they didn't do it. 
They said some things in life are fact. Some things are fact, not opinions, and, 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 not, and not question it. The fact of the matter is, the fact of it, that is you have accepted Jesus Christ as Lord, Savior, huh? Then you are a son of God. God said, what manner of love is this that God has bestowed upon us that you should be called a son of God? What manner of love is this? Now, 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 you say, well, preacher, everything you're saying sounds good. How do, how do we step into this thing? How do we step into this power with the Holy Spirit? How do, we, how do we step into this thing? What's the form? There ain't no form. You said, what's the trick? Ain't no trick. You said, what's the three steps? Ain't no steps. I'm going to make it personal. It's different for everybody in here. It ain't the way I do it. It ain't the way somebody else do it. And it ain't what I do for me. It's something different for everybody and every individual. Why? Because that's the way God made you and he made you unique. It ain't the way Paul and Silas. It ain't the way Peter, James, and John. It ain't the way none of the disciples. They had a personal relationship just like God would have a personal relationship with you. And they got used just like God would to use you. But it costs something. It costs you something. You think the first thing I'm going to say, it costs you to give your life to God and all that. Let me tell you something. So you show you something that's twisted up. The Bible said it ain't that you love God, but that he love you first. Amen. It ain't that you love him. Amen. Huh? But it's that he love you in spite of yourself Amen. and in spite of others. Huh? So many people live under this condemnation. Huh? That because of something in their life, because of things in their life, God can't and God won't and God got it in and God ain't going to do. What the blood is for? What the blood is there for? What use is the blood of Jesus if, if it ain't going to cleanse me, wash me, make me whole? What good is the blood of Jesus there for? What good is Jesus dying on the cross for? I ain't going to get right one time and I'm right for the rest of my life. You know, you know, let me tell you, let me tell you all this about the church. This is what, this is this, this why I ain't, I ain't a church person. Because the church is one of the most sinful, stupidest places in the world. It's where most of, you know, people say the hypocrites go. Well, that's where most folk that come to church is hypocrites. That's why God created church for hypocrites, backed by the liars, murderers, folk that got double minds, people that ain't living right, folk dipping and dabbing, folk scamming, folk trying to step over across the line. Why do you think he created the church? Because he knew folk ain't right. They ain't right, they ain't going to be right until he come back and get it right. But one reason I can't deal with church folk, I can't deal with church folk, and let me tell you why. Because in church, you can't be real. Oh, y'all ain't like y'all ain't know what I'm talking about. I can't come up in church and tell you I'm dealing with a spirit of lust. If I tell you I'm going through a lustful thing, every thought in your mind, you are, oh, I knew he was a devil. I knew something was wrong. I watch him. You will watch me from this day to the rest of my life. You can't come up in church and tell the truth. Told to be where you come and get saved, born again, confess your sin. You can't do it up in church. You come up in here and ask for something. Oh, what you need, brother? Oh, I just need God to bless me with some money. I need him to bless me for a job. What you need? I need God to deliver me from this spirit. I want to kill you. Oh, Lord. Oh, you a devil now. Ooh, you got a spirit. Ooh, don't get too close. He's a whoremonger. Come up in church and say, I got a whoremonging spirit. Watch every sister and every brother. Everybody watching you when you talk. Watch when you go around their wife. You're going to be stepping right there. Praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord. Can't be real with folk up in church. Come up in folk. Come up in church and tell them you drinking. Tell them you smoking some dope. Your stuff starts running all up. They ain't praying for you to get delivered. Church the only place. You can't be real. 
And it should be the place Amen. where you can get delivered. Huh? Why so many folks sit here still bound when they leave here every Sunday? Because they can't get delivered. Huh? Confess your sins to one another. You better not do it up in church. Confess your fault before me. You better not do it up in church. You come out better confessing to a sinner than you confess to somebody saved. Shouldn't even be that way. Shouldn't be that way. Huh? Get back. Y'all don't let me run off on tangents here. Get back on this thing. You, yes, sir. Come on up here, preacher. Come on. Come on, the power of God. Come on up here. Thank God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Anoint that brother here with all. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I need a deep man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I Amen. I've pride been attacked me since I was a kid because I've been through a lot. You know what I'm saying? And it's like the devil keeps attacking me. And you know what I'm saying? I need to get it diminished in the blood of Jesus. That's right. That's right. Come on. You know what? Come on, elder. Where y'all at? Come on, preachers. Come on, evangelists. Come on, pastors. Come on, ministers. That's all right. Y'all stretch your hand toward this man of God and pray. God said, pray one ye for another. Believe God when you pray. Huh? Believe God. We have a God that's able. God that's able. Now that's church. That's church. It ain't a show. It ain't for show. It ain't for people to look and feel religious. It's for where people's lives are honestly changed by the power of God. Not by people, not by a person, not by how good you sound, but by the power of the Holy Spirit of God. That's church. In the name of Jesus. Now let me show you the room. Let me show you something. This brother ain't the only one in here going through struggling. He ain't the only one up here need prayer. But thank God for not being ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but willing to step out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Y'all prophesied over. Prophesied speaking to his spirit. In the name of Jesus. Renew a righteous spirit in him, O oh God. He's called, chosen God, for such a time and such a place and such a, such a season, God. You got your hands on him, God. You have a purpose and a destiny for his life, God. Souls and lives change through this young man, God. In the name of Jesus. Now the devil asked him, God, he want him. Because he know, God, he know he's a mighty man of you, God. Wonderfully made, God. Wonderfully made. In your image and in your likeness. Bless you, oh God. Thank you, God, for the Holy Spirit. Fill him, Lord. Fill him, God. Change him, God. Let him know you love him, God. No more condemnation, God. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Somebody give God some praise for that young man. Somebody give God some praise. Because he was not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was not ashamed. He did not sit down. Tell me God ain't real. I know he's real. I know he's real. And know he's able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God God snatched him. Snatched him. Now, I know the devil want him. Y'all got to keep that man up in prayer. Because the devil want his life. Thank God. That's church. That's church. Hallelujah. What a power God moves. Something unexpectedly. Can't be rehearsed. Can't be made up. Can't be fashioned. It's just real. God is able to do. Huh? That's somebody's son. That's some, that's some, some child daddy right there. That's some woman's husband. Some mighty man of God that God going to use in life tremendously. Now, if he fall tomorrow, don't talk about him. If he slip up, don't you come here talking about I thought he fold the bin. You better shut that mess up. That's what's wrong with folk. Too busy judging one another. But you pray for him. You keep him up in prayer. That's what we call to do. Love one another with the love of Christ. Bless God. 
Anyway, we, you, and I, we're children of the God most high. Yes. Bible says it may not yet appear what we shall be. But we, when we see him, huh, we shall see him as he is, huh, and we shall appear to be what God has shaped and fashioned us, how he wants us to be. Let me tell you something. You walk out of here, not with experience, not with a, just a Sunday service, but with a life of serving the Lord. The Bible says our lives is prostrated before you. Eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding all things. We all lay naked before him. But what I want to get in you today is the power of the Holy Spirit want to work his way mightily through you. It ain't the way somebody else is. It ain't some, how somebody else is. It's how God has created you to be and how he want to use you. Now, I want you to think now. Don't, don't, don't get off focus. If in three years, God could use Christ to turn the whole world upside down in 2,000 some years later, folks still are me my, just mesmerized. Messed up and tripped up over a few miracles. Tangled all up over, over a Bible. Compound and confused come on, come on, man. over faith. Struggling with everyday life. Everyday life. Oh, it's good to talk about struggling with spiritual things, but most people struggle with things in everyday life. They struggle with minds and thoughts, decisions and feelings. People they struggle to get over hurts and wounds, past thoughts and situations and circumstances. They struggle with everyday life. Huh? We are the children of God. Children of God. God says this. Those few verses. You know, I told you I could go all a long time when this is so much I want to say and so much I want to use and so much. Huh? And I don't want to get everybody so so caught up in 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 in, in little, you know, trends and fashion and, and all this and, and great sounding little stories. I'm going to keep it basic, keep it simple, keep it to the point. An awesome price been paid for us. And it's more for us just to be saved. It's for us to rise up and live out and live through. Yeah, there's going to be some bumps in the road. That's, see, that's what catches everybody up because they get caught up on a bump. They get caught up in a bump in somebody's life. You done got caught up on a bump in your life. It's just a bump. Boom. Go up and go over it. Huh? I'm going I'm I'm to make this as clear as I can make it. Not trying to sound careless, heartless, not trying to make it sound like I ain't got no sympathy, no, no, this. Hey, if it was a marriage, it was a marriage. Okay, get over it. If it was a divorce, it was a divorce, get over it. If it was a mistake, it was a mistake, get over it. If it was a mess up, it was a mess up, get over it. If it was a something, it was a, get over it. Get over it. You say, well, it's hard. Okay, I understand that. But that's why God gave you the power of the Holy Spirit. Get over it. Get over it. If it was somebody, okay, get over it. If it was a woman, get over it. If it was a man, get over it. If it was a child, boy, boy get over it. If it was a job, okay, get over it. Say, well, you just don't understand how hard it is. No, I understand how hard it is. I know spiritual struggles. Huh? 
I understand things take time and God got a way of healing things and mending wounds and, and some wounds take longer to heal than others. But let me tell you something. It will heal if you stop pulling the scab off of it. Come on. It will heal. You can get over it. Folks say, well, I need a verse and I preach it because you've been preaching out the Bible for a long time. All right, preacher, they give them another verse. You know, you got to be in the Bible for some folk. You don't stay in there too long. He just making it up. That ain't what the verse says. You ready, preacher? Get on in there. Go to Philippians real quick. Amen. 2 and 12. Is that okay? Amen. So we can get out of here. I know some people be ready to eat barbecue already. So you can taste that barbecue. Amen. Whoa, we finna have us a good time. Says Super Bowl. We even my team is playing. Some of you got something cooking already. So it'll be ready when you get home out of church. <laughs> y'all need to stop, y'all. Something cooking in here. Come. <laughs> Couldn't invite nobody to church, but you done invite a whole bunch of folk over to watch the Super Bowl. <laughs> oh, I wish I know I'm telling. I know I'm telling the truth. Folk always get mad. I know I'm telling the truth. Invited nobody to church. You'll go pick them up to bring them over to watch the Super Bowl. Hey, man, I'm going to come pick you up right after church. Be ready. Be ready. You ain't told them none of that for church. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Ah, right, let me go here, though. Huh? They ready? Done got their Kool-Aid and Bill. You up there going to be drinking, too? Getting out of church today? Now, y'all know I'm telling you. How many of y'all going to drink today for the Super Bowl? I knew I wasn't going to get a hand. Y'all better <laughs> hit this altar. <laughs> huh? <laughs> you know how I know. When I start talking like that, I start watching folks. Y'all don't know I watch out. People looking at their husband like this. <laughs> Shaking a leg. I know he's talking. You know he is. Yeah, you know. <laughs> huh? Done, folk done prayed over your house? Prayed the devil up out of there? Watch how many devils be up in there to death. Drinking, cussing, they jumping all up and down on your car. <laughs>